This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 377 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by EcoGold. Visit them at ecogold.ca. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. This is Glenn the Geek from Lexington, Kentucky. Well, today we have back with us the winner of the Hottest Horseman Contest here at the Horse Radio Network in the couple category, and that's Raphael Val. He is an amazing horseman with a very famous Tennessee walking horse named Ivory Pal. He's a self-taught horseman, and Raphael shares with us what he's learned along the way in his uh, quest for many, many championships with his uh, natural Tennessee walker, and we appreciate him being with us, and I think you'll find what he has to say very, very interesting. He's a fascinating guy. He's done one other tip for us so far, so you can go back and listen to that as well if you missed it. And we're going to get to Raphael shortly, right after this word from Eco Gold. Well, you've heard me tell you about Eco Gold. Now let's hear from one of the professional riders that actually uses the products uh, every day in her professional career. And that is event or international Canadian eventer Jessica Phoenix, WEG hopeful for 2010. Let's hear from Jessica and see how she likes Eco Gold. I love Eco Gold products. I've used their saddle pads and their cross country and open front show jump boots for over a year now, and I'm just thrilled with the results. They're very breathable, they provide great protection, and all of our horses have benefited from using them in competition. Well, thanks, Jess, and you can learn more about all of Eco Gold's products by going to ecogold.ca. That's ecogold.ca. Hi, Raphael, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. It's always fun to speak with you. Hey, Glenn. How are you doing? It's always great to be on your show and uh, get to talk with you. Well, now, you, we had uh, talked last time and talked a lot about you and, and your horse, Ivory Pal, the, the world champion. And so today, how are we going to help people? What, do we need, what are we going to talk about today? You know, the thing that helped me the most is to try to understand what really – what is a horse? You know, it's. Uh, I remember the scene from uh, Sea Biscuit. Remember where the trainer was looking at uh, at, at uh, Sea Biscuit, where he was just kind of fighting the, the the trainers and the handlers. And he and that tra- and the trainer saw something in that horse, and he turned to one of the characters in the movies and said, "We need to take that home, that horse home. He just learns, He just needs to learn how to be a horse again." That was such a uh, an enlightening moment for me because that's the main thing that even though you know we we've uh, asked him to come into our lives and be installed and being uh, in uh, pastures and being trailered and being in barns and so forth. Today's domesticated horse is basically no different than those out in the wild. And look, but, but yet look at the different lifestyles. I mean, a horse out in the wild, you know, think walks between twenty to thirty miles to grazing on food and it has uh, on, on pasture excuse me and it has access to all these different types of grasses and you know falling trees moths you know, drinking from uh, the rivers and so forth and, and just creating a lot of movement obviously in you know domesticate horse uh, can try to replicate that environment of having a horse walk into thousands of thousands of acres is not realistic but we can try to emulate that type of environment by you know, if we have uh, five pa- five acres of pasture we could put different piles of hay throughout the pasture and making the horse walk and i believe in you know in 24 7 turnout because that's you know the horse is walking around it's breathing fresh air uh, mentally it's looking at everything around its environment so uh, as much as possible as much as uh, we can we try to you know, take um you know, particularly, you know, every pound all the other horses into what it would do if it was turned out in, in uh, to roam the thousands and thousands of acres out in the wild. And uh, I think, you know, that helps for their overall health and also their overall mind, just just like that Greek motto is, uh, what is it, sound mind through sound body. Kind of try to keep that in, in uh, perspective for for our horses, too. Well, and we do that with ours. We uh, we ch- always try to let ours out twenty four seven. Now in the middle of the ice storm, we brought them in. But but uh, 
you know, I, and I think you had told me too in the last tip that Ivory Powell spent the first almost four years of his life in a stall, never going out. So, um, That's correct. boy, he must like his new life now. Yeah, I think he's a pretty happy boy. And like you mentioned earlier, there's sometimes when you have to bring him in, like you said, ice storms and so forth. But it's the rare occasion or for safety purposes. You know, I, I know not everybody could do that, but whenever possible, you know, the more turnout and the more movement, you know, the better. So I think that's that's the goal. And also let I you know, let him uh, uh, be uh, barefoot and and we don't even blanket him in the in the winter months. I mean, we moved from Florida where the winters were basically, you know, or from hot to not so hot. Right, right. <laughs> now in here, yeah, now in Tennessee, we get a little bit of more than of the four seasons. Uh, but it, it's amazing how we moved in November of '09 last year to Tennessee, where you know Florida was still Florida weather. We moved up here, and he had a very you know thin coat. Well, over a couple of weeks, he grew that coat tremendously and was fine throughout the whole winter. Never put a blanket on him, just let him be a horse as long as he had the proper shelter, obviously, where they could come in and get away from the wind or the cold rain and have some hay to keep him warm. It's amazing how he he perfectly survived, very healthy-wise and comfortable, the coldest winter in 80 years in Tennessee. And we had just taken him from, uh, not, you know, a couple of months before from the warm Florida weather. But it shows you the genetics is, uh, of, of the horse is no different from, you know, how they are in the wild to now. You saw how quickly he adapted. So that was a great eye-opening experience for me, too. It's like, wow, look, just, just let Mother Nature do what she's programmed to do. Just let her, uh, you know, he's going to grow a natural coat uh, normally. And it was thick. He looked like a big old... Wooly bear, uh, his face was covered with hair and so forth. And my wife like, would say, "Well, he doesn't look as uh, clean as before. He looks kind of like a mountain horse." And sure enough, you know, the, she, she was absolutely right. Some of the pictures we took, uh, we put on uh, Facebook. You can see he has that just grew a lot of hair to naturally protect himself uh, from the cold. Well, uh, you know, I, obviously he's beautiful anytime. So. So that's uh, well, thank you. that's uh, you know, and we try and we try and do the same thing. We'll put a sheet on when it rains and stuff, but we try and just let them grow yeah. the natural coat. Some horses are better at that than others. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, that's terrific. Let your horse be a horse. I think you know sometimes we forget that. I think sometimes we are so into pampering them that uh, we forget that they still you know for many many years they didn't need pampered. Um, Right. And and uh, we just need to let him be a horse. I think that's that's pretty good advice. We can find out more okay. about Ivory Pal at IvoryNoelRanch dot com, and of course, Ivory Pal has a pretty good Facebook page, doesn't he? Yeah, we're pretty lucky. We have a lot of great fans and supporters, and we always are thankful for everybody. And like to take that opportunity at this time to thank all the fans and supporters on Facebook too. Yeah, t- almost twenty nine thousand of them. There's a few. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's up for it. Everybody's great. We really enjoy how they've opened themselves up to to uh, Ivory Powell. And, uh, you know, one quick thing is, uh, I know I mentioned this to you before, but a book that beautifully captures uh, the uh, soul of the horse and the natural way of the horse is uh, um, The Soul of the Horse by Joe Camp. He's also come up with a new book. It's called The Soul of the Horse, The Block Continues, and he's going to come out with a, another book that's called born to be wild he's done a lot of research on the subject of you know letting the horse be a horse and uh he, he was uh actually the uh creator of benji now he's gotten into horses and thank god he's used his talents and uh in very great storytelling into uh helping people understand you know about letting the horse be a horse so that's a book i always recommend to everybody and as a matter of fact when i get questions or calls or so i think what can what can you do to help me train my horse and I said well I really don't train horses but I could help you by you know if you start reading the book because like I said if you understand if we understand what a horse is all about that rest takes care of itself you know whether training or or just having a relationship with the horse well and that's called the soul of a horse right by Joe Camp yes correct okay Joe Camp excellent book we've got it even on Ivory Powell's uh, homepage because I wish I had the book when I started this journey you know, nine years ago, because I would have eliminated a lot of mistakes. And he went through the same experience you know, uh, as being a first-time horse, uh, horse owner, getting into horses later in his life, in his uh, mid-60s, and realizing what everybody was telling him was 
didn't make sense or was a myth. We started doing a lot of research and just learned very quickly by trial and error of the important role of letting a horse be a horse and, uh, and how the uh, role of uh, the diet plays. You know, we give the uh, horses sweet feed, uh, and when they're uh, in their natural environment, they don't have access to all that sugar. And, you know, that creates different health problems and so forth. It's not like, you know, no different than humans that we're living in a society where, you know, we eat a lot of sweets and so forth. And, and uh, being inactive, you know, causes a lot of health problems from, you know, diabetes and so forth. So a lot of the things of the way we feed the horses and the lifestyle that we uh, put on the horse, you know, some of the health and, and uh, health issues are, are, you know, show up in, 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 the, in the same way as humans do by, you know, the current challenges we face as a society. All right, so that's the soul of a horse. Thank you, Raphael, and we'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you, Glenn. Looking forward to it. Thanks again for having me on the show. Thank you very much. Well, thanks to Raphael for joining me there. I really appreciate it. Love talking to him and talk to him for hours at a time. It's just uh, it's just so thoughtful. Well, I wanted to remind everybody that there are seven other shows on the Horse Radio Network, and one of those is the Dressage Radio Show. And this week, Chris had Matthias Rath on. You might recognize that name. He's the one that's taken over the ride for Totilis, and uh, he's his new partner. And, of course, that caused a big uh, uh, you know, controversy in the horse world when he was taken away from Edward Gal. Well, now you'll get to know the new rider of Totilis, and she had him on an exclusive interview on episode number 86 of the Dressage Radio Show. So you want to check that out, and also all the other shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. We'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 